Good morning to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for the 18th of June, 2017. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Uh, some things happening in the tropics to talk about on this Father's Day, 2017. Of course, we have our two areas of interest here, one in the Gulf of Mexico, which has now, of course, been designated as Invest Area 93L. Remember, the Hurricane Center goes through the numbers 90 through 99, and the letter L for Atlantic to designate these suspect areas for further investigation by various resources. It's just a, a naming convention that they use to sort of set things into motion. So these are our two areas, high potential for development with the system 93L here coming out of the Caribbean, and then our tropical wave that came off at a very low latitude here, now down to a medium potential and I'll show you why that has been sort of um, downgraded, if you will, a little bit, and what it may or may not mean for folks in the islands. This is the early morning visible satellite animation, and we see 93L over here in the Western Caribbean. Now, we're going to look at a floater image where it's zoomed in closer in just a moment, just kind of pointing out what's what. You can also see still some pretty strong upper-level winds, but see how they turn and do this sort of curve shape? We'll take a look at that in a different perspective in a moment as well. And then here is Invest Area 92L, trying to curl up down here at that low latitude. Definitely some low-level rotation, but it lacks deep, organized convection. We see this one band on the northern side trying to wrap in. And for our friends here in the southern Windward Islands, uh, and even Barbados now maybe, and points south and west from there, uh, this is more than likely going to bring tropical storm conditions to some areas, even if this is not a tropical storm. And so that means 40 mile per hour winds or higher, uh, gusty winds at that, especially if any of these thunderstorms happen to pop up as this is moving through. In other words, the more convectively active it is, if it's trying to pulse up, we typically see that the winds in the uh, lower levels of the atmosphere, five to 7,000 feet, are easier to bring down to the surface. Uh, we'll talk about that more in a moment. Here, in fact, we'll do it now. So this is a close-up of the system, 92L, and you can clearly see, uh, even in the nighttime visible part and as it transitions over to daytime, uh, definitely some rotation in here, broad turning with this system, but it's not very well organized. It's not a, a tropical depression yet. The GFS uh, continues to show it developing enough that this may sort of peak right before it reaches the islands, and it still might make it to weak tropical storm status, but don't let that fool you. Uh, again, what I'm trying to talk about here is these, look at these storms that pop up here in, in this band as an example, and folks who live in the area, you don't need me to tell you this, you've been through enough of them in your lifetimes more than likely to understand that when these come through and they erupt these storms like that, uh, they can definitely dump a lot of heavy rain in a short period of time and bring some gusty winds. So boaters, anybody with marine interest, this will be more of an impact for you. And anybody vacationing to the area, uh, as long as you can get there, you know, don't cancel your plans. This isn't going to wreck everything. Um, it's not like there's a hurricane coming, but it is there, something to keep an eye on and be wary of. So this is really interesting. Um, the low pressure center with 93L, this is the Yucatan Peninsula uh, right through here. A lot of people go to vacation in this area, Cancun and Cozumel. And, um, and then here's our system over here. We have the Cayman Islands. And the low level center supposedly is sitting right in here somewhere. But if you look, and you don't have to use too much of your imagination, I think you can see that there's kind of this curly shape coming in here, uh, maybe in the mid-levels. We don't have an airplane out there yet. I say we, meaning the U.S. government, <laughs> not me. Um, you know, the recon plane is supposed to go out later, and they would investigate this. Uh, but it's interesting. You also see how the winds here are fanning out. Uh, they're getting blown away in this direction over on the northwest side or farther away, but this is interesting that maybe this is trying to form a center 
somewhere over in this area. We'll have to see if this convection just dies away or if it can maintain itself and develop what the GFS has been showing and that is a system developing out this way moving up in a track more like that instead of northwest across the Yucatan I mean in fact if we go back and look at this National Hurricane Center I mean you see that's where the center is supposed to be located right now and then the formation area is nowhere really near Florida if you look at this sort of bulb in the potential track area so yeah it'll be interesting to see what happens they say that the recon flight is scheduled if necessary I really hope that they keep it and you can see here even on the upper level analysis from the University of Wisconsin site uh, upper level winds at the 100 to 250 millibar level going this way here this way here and this way here and that's upper level divergence the air is spreading out in the upper levels instead of like up here coming right across the system it's not being sheared as bad there's still some wind shear in the area but you can clearly see this sort of anticyclonic flow developing with this system so it may be starting to organize uh, on the other hand if we look out here with uh, 92L um, upper level wind still favorable but it's leaving this sort of deep easterly flow cocoon uh, still maybe has a couple of more days before it really reaches more of a I mean look at this trough right in here that's digging in and those are some strong upper level winds out ahead of this system but if this you know weakens a little bit and the wave is able to move uh, with that and everything's gradually moving west or this fills in maybe that's what the GFS is picking out in fact if we look at the vorticity signature our tropical wave out in the Atlantic 92L uh, that's pretty impressive a round signature with a, a good red ball in the middle and that shows me that it's more of your classic signature of a developing tropical wave rather than something that's more amorphous like this as an example or this convective feature storms probably over Texas all non-tropical related completely but you get the idea that down here in the tropics you know the more round something is the better it's and what we call the conservation of angular momentum like a skater pulling their arms in and they spin faster and those faster uh, the, the more of energy that is then that shows up as the brighter colors on the scale there's a lot more math and physics to that but that's the simple way to explain it meanwhile and this is a great juxtaposition or contrast the system 93L a little bit more amorphous in shape yet it looks like it's trying to maybe concentrate some of that vorticity over here we don't see them. there's a little one there too but uh, this will be fascinating to watch when I show you this again tomorrow um, let's see what happens with both of these could be interesting right alright so the track plots for 92L wanted to throw this out uh, yeah, it's worth discussing more divergence in the models today as you can see compared to yesterday with a possibility of you know maybe some interaction north of Barbados but I think the general idea is that this will come in uh, between Trinidad and Tobago somewhere in there and cross into the Eastern Caribbean Sea it could take a little bit more northerly track and when I show you the GFS output from the 6Z run it keeps it as an identifiable feature at least in the lower levels of the atmosphere all the way out towards Jamaica and we can see that right here the AEMI that's basically the GFS interpolated and at day five is right there uh, what would be left of it just to the southwest of Jamaica uh, looking at the intensity guidance for 92L uh, still a window of opportunity for this to become a tropical storm here with the GFS the purple line here being the most aggressive and then it drops off as the shear begins to increase but it's interesting some of the models here you just basically keep it, I don't know, it takes, I, the consensus is it would weaken. However, that takes until about 60 hours or so for it to really drop off and maybe dissipate. And then it should just be a swirl of clouds with intermittent convection, at least by the intensity guidance, when it would be near Jamaica, if, it, if indeed that is the case. Uh, looking at the track guidance for 93L, well... <laughs> 
this to me is useless at the time because we don't have a well-defined center just yet. And so I thought I'd throw this out there that from the six, uh, the 12Z run anyway, the guidance indicating, and what does 12Z mean by the way? It says 12 UTC. That's universal time coordinate. Zulu time, all of it generally the same, that we're talking about a standard time instead of, well, what time is that, you know, Eastern or Central? Uh, 12 UTC would be 8 a.m. Eastern time. Look at it that way. And that's when these were initialized. little lesson for you there. And it shows the center right here east of Belize, but again, we go back to this. I just, uh, where is it? I'm not seeing it. A center maybe, maybe right in there, uh, just east of Belize. But there's no low clouds streaking in. If there's a, a, a center there, it is ill-defined for sure. So anyway, track guidance, interesting. You have one camp basically moving it into this region uh, overall, and then another camp, basically the European and its ensembles, over here. So divergence in the models, to be sure. So I want to show you the GFS. This is the 6Z run this morning. So that means it was initialized at 2 a.m. Eastern Time. And this is the initial map, 850 millibar level. And this is showing the center of vorticity, what, however weak it may be, just east of Belize by that little X there uh, at the initial conditions, 2 a.m. this morning. Now that's coming up on eight and a half hours ago. And things change, right? And notice, too, that our tropical wave out here not quite entering the frame. So let's put this into motion, and this will be five days, 5,000 feet in the atmosphere, and the vorticity signature. Okay, so let's scoot down and watch how things progress. This kind of goes away. This takes over. Very amorphic in shape. You see the other system coming in, and that looks a lot more healthy in the vorticity signature. And we'll run this loop a couple of times, no worries, so we can track what's what. So as you can see, the 93L moves on up into portions of the Florida Panhandle and then to the Deep South as a big rainmaker. And then there it is, right at day 5, 92L comes here just south of Jamaica. So let's watch this again. The vorticity tries to take over north side of Cuba into the Gulf of Mexico and then a track meandering around large, you know, messy, rainy system. But there are some... 50 knot winds at 5,000 feet on the east side. So this, you know, if you have 30, 40, 40 knot winds or so, you know, coming from the south up here into Appalachie Bay, you can push some water into places like St. Mark's as an example. Um, this could be completely wrong and it's like the Euro shows and heads over to Texas. But the GFS has just been, I mean, the, you remember Debbie in 2012? Yeah, it was a similar complete um, split in the model camps back then and so this is a similar situation and we'll just have to see I guess so again looking out here with our system coming in 92L there it is and notice that vorticity really starts to increase you get some browns in there right as it passes through the islands and on this run it's coming a little bit north of Trinidad and Tobago so that would be good news for them and a little bit more I don't want to say worrisome, but it would certainly be problematic in terms of outdoor plans uh, for areas like Barbados and points south and west of there. And what we'll do tomorrow is we'll look at a close-up uh, map and get you geographically oriented and myself as well of all the islands, who should expect what conditions, etc. So a lot to keep track of, no major problems, but don't discount heavy rain and brush that off. Uh, even if this GFS solution turns out to be completely wackadoodle and it does follow the Euro and go into Texas, you folks in Texas know how much heavy rain can be a problem. Uh, so let's don't ignore this and dismiss it as not being a big deal uh, because heavy, heavy rainfall, you know what people do. It's in, in, in fact, tomorrow I'll be showing you some video from uh, our friend down in Jamaica. They've had some heavy rain associated loosely with the overall pattern from this, and there's more flooding there. Uh, so rainfall definitely needs to be respected. All right, well, I'll be on top of all of it as always. I appreciate you tuning in. Don't forget, if you're watching on YouTube and haven't subscribed to the channel yet, 
now is a great time to do so and make sure you enable your notifications on your devices so you know when I put a video up. Also, these go into our app. It's called Hurricane Impact, and it's available in the App Store. And everything we do goes into the app as well. So if you're on the go, you can get Hurricane Impact, two words, and follow along there. Uh, and it also apparently helps if you do the thumbs up on the video. I don't understand all that. I'm not in it for the likes, but it is nice to see people reacting. It's, it's really nice, that interaction that we have. All right, with all that being said, have a great rest of your Sunday. And again, seriously, if you're a dad out there, enjoy being a dad. I've got seven kids, and they all keep me, and as you pick your jaws up off the floor, seven kids. Yep, they keep me busy when it's not hurricane season. It's uh, usually a lot of fun. So enjoy today. Uh, the dads deserve it, believe it or not. All right, I'm Mark Sutherth, HurricaneTrack.com, and I'll talk to you some more tomorrow.